fail there hit the wrong I button I accidentally unpaused the YouTube video and scared the shit out of myself with that so <laughs> <laughs> to be honest I was like oh bedtime <laughs> then I realised that it wasn't Wait, did you accidentally the put the outro on <laughs> yeah well considering it started off with see you next week <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, how we doing good 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 terrible. Them, them cards are really irritating, Chris. Oh, I know, but... Do you know what it does to my levels on this end? Boo! Boo! Ban the card. But I like, I like playing with cards. Ugh. Look, Chris, just just do your promotion. Get it done. I've, got, I've got no promotion because I don't own or produce any playing cards. So there's no benefit to me. Oh, I was talking about your channel. I oh, know, I'm not bothering about that. Oh, you know, okay. I don't Fair want enough. people looking at my shit. They think you're in the bathroom. <laughs> I am. I'm currently on the shitter. It does look like a, a shower curtain. A very bad shower curtain. <laughs> well, I, I kind of had an option. I had put a single duvet cover up. One that looks like I've stolen it from my nan's house. Or, um show you all the pile of shit that's behind me and who in their right mind would sit there live on YouTube with a big massive mountain of shit behind them, Mark? <laughs> oh, dear. Oh, yeah, so fun. I covered it up. I covered it up. Yeah, I'm in the cupboard under the stairs. Call me Harry Potter. I'd rather call you Hermione. <laughs> what, so you can look at my tits and pretend that you forgot that, that she was 12 I, in that film? Hang on, hang on, that's just a bit weird. I was just about to say, that's a little bit weird. <laughs> what about for you? Why would you want to be calling me Hermione? Because that's why you make love to me from behind, so you can pretend that's someone else. Mate, trust me. Making love to you from behind, there's no question about who you are. <laughs> so either me or a real life Peppa Pig. <laughs> <laughs> Oh dear. We've got a fun show lined up tonight, I think. There's nothing fun about it. We hate the world we're going to tell people about it. Tonight's it's all a bit serious. libel suits. <laughs> um, uh, will we get one to fit, Chris? <laughs> hey, I have lost four stones since the, uh, the end of November, so fuck yourself with a big massive spatula. A spatula? Aren't they long and flat? <laughs> Well, yeah, but they start off thin if you put the handle in first. <laughs> well, anything's a dildo if you're brave enough. I mean, that was my motto <laughs> until uh, I, I, I walked into a field of cacti. <laughs> Cracking. As you might see this evening, um, Chandler isn't with us. Um, he may join us later if he remembers they forgot to press. To, if, <laughs> yeah, that's it. Just, yeah, he if he remembers. Words. Remembers to press the button, he'll be here. Failing that, um, he'll be sacked. <laughs> he oh, he's getting off. useless. I'm not being I, funny, but I, I, saw, I sold him a good PC so he wouldn't have technology issues. And it's not that technology is an issue. He is a fucking issue. <laughs> he is like when... He's like, uh, press any key to continue, and he's like... Uh, where's the any key? <laughs> where's the any key? <laughs> And I mean, Jimmy's not much better. He lives in a town called Wisbeach, and if anyone who's been there before will know, Wisbeach is scummy. Their market still sells knockoff uh, tapes recorded off top of the pops. <laughs> <laughs> right, let's do some shout outs then. Uh, good How? evening. Don't shout out, wait, I need to turn my mic headphones down. Definitely. Okay. Right. 
Uh, good evening, uh, Stuart. Good evening. Good evening, Orgy. Uh, good evening to Lucky Vape, Stuart. Mr. Martin, good evening, Gareth. Um, Ali, Andrew. good evening. Liam Payne, good evening. Rob Hardman, good evening. Have I missed anyone? If I have, I'm yeah, sorry. Andrew. Oh, good evening, Andrew. I just spotted that. Mr. Elliot Markski, how are you doing, buddy? Um, and good evening, Jono. Good evening, everybody. Oh, Alan. Alan Burt. Sorry, I missed Alan Burt. They're all here. We've got the team. The squad. We got Where the is posse. Diddy? Where We're is missing Diddy? Diddy? Oh well. Failure. No, he's changed his name to Daddy. Half, half Daddy. I know his real name, and he won't let. He doesn't tell anyone what his real name is. Sean Coombs, isn't it? No. Yeah, Sean Coombs. Uh, what? Close. Sean Diddy Coombs. No. Did you, none of you get the joke? No. no. P. Diddy's real name is Sean Coombs. Oh, P. Fine. Diddy, the uh, shit rapper from the 90s. Yeah. Fucking yeah. hell. It's like talking to people from Wizbeach. Huh? <laughs> he's, still in, he's still top of the Wizbeach charts. Being played <laughs> on the radio daily. Right, put so, the playing cards away. What now. are we vaping on? What are we vaping on? Who's going to go first? Me, Orion. 45 milligram. Whatever that shit Mark sent me. <laughs> Apple and elderflower, that's the one. To be honest, I kind of forgot what it was because I tried making a rhubarb 50 milligram myself. And um, it was really strong because I'd mixed it up ready to take 30 mil concentrate, but I bought Inerva, which mixes at 5%. So I thought, do you know what? I'm going to just add that to it. So then it was too strong. So I thought, I need to dilute this. And I couldn't find the VG, so I added PG. And it started ripping my fucking throat apart. So um, if anyone wants 50 milligram that feels like they're vaping 90 milligram, give me a shout. I've got some. Um, but yeah, so I did I did one tank with that, and then I was like, fuck this. And I put uh, apple and elderflower back in. And to be honest, it's tainted it a little bit. It tastes like someone chucked an apple at a rhubarb, and, uh, a rhubarb pie, and then... The apple sort of hit the pie, got a bit of rhubarb on it, and then hit a cat litter tray. Oh, oh, that could be an interesting flavour. Let's go with that. I like the description. Yeah, Mark. <laughs> um, <laughs> what? A apple, rhubarb, and cat litter tray. Yeah. Yeah. I'd like to see. Yeah, you I'd like you, to see. You wouldn't want to write a Tolkien like, novel for a description. I'd, I'd like to see you pitch the idea to your fucking flavourologist, or Charlotte has some think. Uh, Do you have a mixologist, same, like, Mark, or are you the mixologist? No, the guy that sort of d d d extracts the flavours out of shit, whatever his name is. Gareth. I'm going to call him Gareth. Let's call him <laughs> Gareth. Um, no, I've still got the billet box. It's in the cupboard. But uh, I bought a year's supply of Orion pods, so I'm not going to make use of them, Mark. Making use of them. Yeah, well. Right. Talk about pods. What, what are you vaping on, Cass? I've got me this. It's the SX Mini, which I bought you know from Mark. Looking at that from the side like that, no, no, back how you had it. Why are you turning it? You had it one way the whole time I was talking, then you turned it, as I said, looking at it like that. <laughs> um, it looks like it. Do you remember them mini disc players? Oh, my God, it, does it does. To get. It looks it like does, the remote. It? Yeah. Or oh, it looks like an MP3 player, the long ones that used to just plug into shit. It's actually the really old, good. The old Sony ones that you could twist in the middle to skip the tracks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, this is great, although I found out about ten minutes ago from Mark, because uh, I don't read instructions, that in the instructions it says you need to replace the pod every two fills. Now, I'm getting like a day and a half per fill. Like, this thing is not thirsty, but three days out of a pod is just shocking. So I'm going to use it until it tastes like ch like charcoal. Because I mean, you know, get my money's if, worth. If you want some of that fifty milligram uh, that tastes like ninety milligram rhubarb, that lasts you about three <laughs> months. Because you have one here and it lasts you for about six hours. <laughs> um, Honestly, it's horrendous. I don't even know how I can dilute it. I don't even know how to dilute it. Okay. So, for fear of losing Simon from the show, I've got my Zeltu pod system, um, which. I got some new pods, and they must be a different batch because these ones are absolutely amazing in comparison to the last ones I had. The last age is the flavor is great, and I'm not getting any dry hits, um, so maybe they've changed them in some way. But this is lovely. In both of these, 
I've got Dinner Lady's uh, Blackberry Crumble Pie thing in salt. Why? How, do, how does that... How, you say desserts and um, Nick salts. Mm-hmm. How do you find they work? Do they work well or not? Well, I've tried no. two of the Dinner Lady range. The Lemon Tart and the Blackberry Crumble. The Lemon Tart was spot on. Absolutely lovely. The Blackberry Crumble is still nice, but it's better in short fill. Um, they work fine. They feel like they're going to be really thick and just kill everything, but actually they work lovely. Um, yeah, they they work, their working functionality is fine, but they don't taste the same. The like, lemon tart's pretty much exactly the same. Uh, the blackberry crumble a little different. It's more crumbly than it is blackberry, but it, I haven't got any complaints about it at all. I mean, um, I suppose it depends how much airflow you're allowed to get in, because my Orion's practically shut off. So I don't produce well, enough vapour for me to get a proper taste of dessert flavours. That's why I like fruits and menthols. I mean, this has got no airflow, basically. Um, and this one's got some airflow. Um, and actually, I've noticed very little difference between the two. Um, I still can't figure out where the air goes in at this. I can assume it's down the side of the pod, because I, I still haven't figured it out. Although I did get a message from, I think it was Stuart who messaged me, and he said, take the O-ring out. The Americans are saying that they don't have the O-rings in them. So take that out and that'll improve it. And it did make a, an incremental improvement. Um, did you... Um, where is the chamber situated on the pod? Because presumably the air enters the chamber. Some, uh, from the uh, bottom. Some, yeah, that's where the air hole is. Then. Yeah, but then look, it's fully sealed. There's even an O-ring. Well, that's why there's no fucking airflow. <laughs> yeah. but I that, actually might really be like the o- that might be the O-ring they're, asked, they're telling you to remove. No, it's the bung in the top of the um, the bung in the top where you fill it is where the um, is where the, the Americans don't have it. Apparently, it makes it childproof. Um, supposedly, they don't. Um, wait, wait, they don't have the bung in it. They no, don't, they don't have. They don't have the bung just in the top flood. of the pod. No, because you're screwing it all the way down. You're still screwing it all the way down. Yeah, no, but all it's it the is, air displacement. Like uh, as you suck through, it's going to cause air to go in where the liquid is as the liquid goes into the coil. And it will push the liquid through in, and flood it. No, I haven't noticed that at all. Weirdly. Okay. Um, I know what you mean, but yeah, it's not been an issue. And then I've got my RX 200 with the Berserker on top. Um, I'm on day five of battery life so far. So. Cass, did it improve, increase your capacity on the pod? Stuart wants to know. Um, not really, because. Unless you want to fill above those filling holes, which is brave at the best of times, um, I have I haven't filled it that high to be honest. I just fill it just to, to just below the filling holes, and um, that's that does it for me. I mean, like I said, I get a day and a half out of each fill, so can't really complain at the amount of juice it uses. I, would, I do wish they came out with a version that was area though. I mean, I like the tight draw, but just a bit more would have been nice. But it's a lo- lovely vape, lo- and the battery life lasts all day. Try taking the O ring out, the seal, and the pod in. I'll never get fucking back in again. All right, give me a second. Oh, well, it's worth a try. There Come we on, go. Live. We want to know. We want to know how we're getting on with this. Um. But I was quite. I'm quite proud of myself getting that review up as fast as I did. And for anyone that's watched the review, just know there was 18 hours of screaming at my computer, pre- preceding the export of that video. There should have been it's, 18 it's... hours of you testing as well. Is my again? audio extremely loud? Do I need to turn myself down? No, you're all right. Um, no, I don't. I don't think so. Um, <sighs> I can't even get the fucking thing out. I'll, I'll do it as as and when throughout the show and let you know. Um, so yeah, that's what that's what I'm vaping on tonight. Nothing crazy. Um, keeping it simple. Can you, you genuinely say you're getting five days worth of battery life out of that when you've got a load of other devices you're using on throughout the day? Yeah, because I use I've been using this at work mostly for the last week or so. Mm. Well, it's just hard to anyway. tell, isn't it? Because if you take one mod with you and it dies halfway through the day, you can say I've had half a day's battery life out of this. If you've got four mods in your pocket, it's hard to actually say how much battery life you've had out of it. Yeah, I suppose, but then like the Zell two, I'll charge that. In the, uh, that'll be charged in the morning, and I'll charge it by the time I get home again. I wish everyone would stop hating on the on the music. It is a bit annoying, to be fair. I don't even notice it it anymore. Do you remember that? um, What was that fucking game? Um, Do you know the one where you're like a little ball of gel and you just roll around collecting stuff? No. No. Oh, 
don't know if I did Gilbert. that game. No, I think <laughs> it's a real game. game. What are you vaping on the mod? Uh, I, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm being a little bit different tonight. I, 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 I have got Old Faithful. Um, hey, the is that a 213? It's the Fudgeye. Oh, so it's not even the good 213. Mm. But this has been thrown up and down the stairs. And it just keeps going. Just keeps going. Um, I am also... On the rose. Ooh, I thought you didn't like the rose. Or was that the trillium you didn't like? Mouth, I didn't. I hated the trillium. Mouth to lung, I think the rose is dog shit. However, restricted lung, good as gold. The game was called Katamari Damansi, and you were basically a sticky ball, and you rolled around the town collecting all that lamp posts and civilians and shit. Oh, as you do. As you of do. Course. Um, in the rows, I am vaping on Hot Cross Burn from Cotton and Cable. Uh, running a 0.4 coil, 30 watts. Nice. Very nice. And also running the SQ today uh, with a Haku. <laughs> um, point four build in there, single coil, obviously. And in there, I am vaping on B and BP from JVB. All those acronyms, if you, bro. If you mix B and BP from JVB with trifle, it tastes like jam on toast. Uh, it sounded like you were talking fucking equations there. Yeah, I, I, I abbreviate everything. BMBP is bread and butter pudding. STP. JVB. Pudding. J Jeffrey's J JDC. Mates. No, JCD. JCD. Jeffrey's Cocktail Dreams. JVV. JVV. Oh, I'm just going to stretch. Oh, there we go. I'll just point out that I was on Center T shirt. <laughs> we, didn't, we didn't have any big enough, Chris. Fuck you! What size are you, Cass? Uh, XL? Uh, well, maybe. That'd be alright for your thigh, Chris. Yeah, I might, I might get my toe in it. Hang on, hang on. That would fit how much weight he's lost. It would, yeah. <laughs> Good evening, Colette. I like Colette. She commented on my video. She can she stay. Colette's OG. She's awesome. We love Colette. I, put, I like uh, her brother more. Gillette. Oh dear. <laughs> oh dear. <laughs> well, I thought we, we would segue into that advertising thing that we were going to talk about because have you seen that? Yeah, we've Gillette got the affair? news. We've got the news oh, first. Oh, fuck's sake. I've got loads of well. news. Well, I say loads. I've got five things to talk about for the news and I'm going to finish on a lighter note. And we've got some good news, we've got some weird news, and we've got some fun news. So, should we start? It's Channel Let's Pregnant. Right, so, first things first. As we all know, let me let me just do a little cheeky screen share. Public Health England released a thing saying that smoking was 95% better than... Safer. Um, safer than smoking. They have just um, reviewed their previous research, and this was undertaken by leading independent tobacco experts, and they provide an update on the PHE's 2015 review. This is on the government website, so this, has, this doesn't take into account any kind of... Uh, press bias um, because there, there isn't any supposedly and basically their main findings are pretty much identical to what they did in, what they found in 2015 so vaping poses only a small fraction of the risks of smoking and switching completely from smoking to vaping conveys substantial health benefits now you might say well we we know this already but the important thing about this is that this is from a government body who are continuing to push a positive agenda for us uh, E-cigarettes could be contributing to at least 20,000 successful new quits per year and possibly many more. I actually think it's probably more than that. Um, and e-cigarette use is associated with improved quit success rates over the last year and an accelerated drop in smoking rates across the country. Many thousands of smokers 
incorrectly believe that vaping is as harmful as smoking, around 40% of them have not even tried an e-cigarette. Fools. Um, yep, indeed. I there think is much I agree with you that... Sorry. Mm, go on. No, go on. Say, I think I agree with you that that 20,000 is a very conservative estimate, considering oh. I'm still being added to vape groups I didn't get asked to add it to, and they've got 30,000 members. And what? 15,000 members and all sorts of shit. I mean, in my shop alone, and if someone does the maths, I help at least three to five people a day give up smoking. Right? I work... What? New new vapors coming in? Brand new vapors. Um, three to five a day? Three to five a day. Brand you're new. You're going to run out of fucking... You're going to run out of town... You're going to run out of citizens before you run out of edict. Um, so, anyway, there is... Uh, much public understanding, much public misunderstanding. Less than 10% of adults understand that most of the harms to health from smoking are not caused by nicotine. Um, and they go on, and essentially, um, what they're doing is they're they're reiterating their previous statements about what we know to be safer about vaping. And I just think it's a really it's, it's a landmark thing that they're continuing to push it, and they haven't really changed their mind in any way. Um, so yeah, I just think, I mean, I'll drop the link in a little while into the chat and you guys can have a read of that, but it's, I think it's quite interesting that they've done that. Right. I didn't know this, but I didn't realise that using e-cigarette e or, or vapours with um, e nicotine containing e-liquid is actually illegal in Japan. Um, didn't realise this. So what's happened is Japan Tobacco launches two heat not burn products. Now we all know heat not burn products are terrible. However, in Japan, they have um, made their own category, which is called, uh, what do they call it? Reduced risk products, supposedly, RRP. So what's happened here is PMI have had pretty much the corner of the market and Japan Tobacco Inc, JTI, they've just spent billions on the development and product of reduced risk products. And they're trying to beat out PMI who are winning the race for them. Like I said, there's this, this this fresh market in Japan because you can't use or buy um, nicotine containing e-liquid out there. So heat not burn is the only alternative. But that guess they what have. you can buy? What? Schoolgirls underwear in a vending machine. That makes sense. You can. <laughs> so can make sense, when they were looking, how do you ignite them though? What the underwear or? Yeah. Well, uh, anyway. Please continue. Um, so when they were launched in Japan, they found the fertile ground due to a number of factors, amongst which the local ban on e-cigarettes that contain nicotine and contain liquid. As they entered the US, analysts at e-cig intelligence, an independent e-cigarette and tobacco alternatives market analysis resource, said that products will never reach the same level in the States to match the one in Japan, i.e. vaping just isn't a thing out there. But it's interesting that heat not burn is a big thing over in Asia. Um, Wait, no, I think that that statement's reversed. Go back to that a minute, so I can see what you're reading. Da, da, da. We'll never uh, reach the same level of success in the states. So match the one in Japan. <coughs> I think it's saying that the <coughs> burn will never reach the same level in the states as it, as it will in Japan. Yeah, that's what I mean. Of way around. Yeah, but you said you made it. You said that e-cigarettes aren't going to be as popular in Japan as they are in the states. Where it's the complete opposite is what that statement was saying. Yeah. It's saying that, that heat not burn won't have the same um won't yeah, have the same footfall in the States as it would in Japan. But that's only because these cigarettes are outlawed. If these cigarettes well, exactly. were, were were allowed, then surely <coughs> heat not burn would fall on its ass the same way as of everything else. And the problem with that is if uh, the Japanese JMI or whatever it is, J C B you know, PMS, whatever the fuck you call it. Is investing yes. billions of dollars. They're not gonna. They're not gonna support a government uh, lift on a ban on e-cigarettes because then their of fucking products won't sell. So well, they've exactly. kind of dug a hole for themselves by developing that shit in the first place. They should have done what um, Icos did and send one free to every news agent, and it will sit on their shelf until uh, it reaches expiry date. Fucking pretty joke. much. Right. My next little news piece is. Um, here we go. Mm, uh, blah, 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 blah. New York University paper says vaping is substantially less harmful than cigarettes. Now, this is one of the first um, universities I've seen in the States come out with this agenda. Like, you know, uh, we have Public Health England, Cancer Research UK, King's College, etc., etc. I haven't seen many from US universities 
Um, that might just be because I'm not really looking that hard, but this one was quite interesting. So what they say is when nicotine is decoupled from the deadly toxins in inhaled smoke, it is substantially less harmful. Um, in other words, nicotine's harmful in cigarettes because of all the other shit, which is what we know. Um, most of the harm is due to the inhalation of combustion products and carbon monoxide. Uh, E-cigarette aerosol is very different. E-cigarettes do not contain any tobacco and do not produce carbon monoxide. Now, if more, the point of this, I mean, this seems like really obvious information to us who know what vaping is, but if more universities in the state are able to put out this, then they're more likely to listen to, the or governments are more likely to listen to the universities the more that put them out, because as far as I'm aware, governments do take university research quite seriously. As far wrong. as I'm aware, 80% of vaping advocates that I know in the States used English uh, Public Health England st um, statistics to promote vaping and to also quash any bullshit. And I think it supports, because you know what Americans are like, they're very patriotic, they're very all about themselves. Yeah, um, of course. You know, so if they start publishing their own independent research that supports and backs up their arguments, then I think uh, that'll be the new go-to argument for a lot of pro vapors. Well, the more sources they have providing the the information that they need, the better. I mean, I th at the end of the day, I think the problem we have in general is that there's not enough uh, public information available, freely available. So you have the public health England. But unless you're looking for it, it's not just going to pop up as an ad on Google. Do you know what I mean? No. You need to, you know, we need to have we need to have it printed on fucking the sides of hospitals and shit. Oh, of course. I mean, it's like it's like a lot of people are saying that it's it's hard for companies to research the medicinal properties of cannabis because cannabis is category one. It actually restricts research into it unless you're heavily licensed. So you can't research something that's illegal because it's illegal to research it. Yeah, and the people uh, that own the. The, the biggest license in the cannabis field are the husband of uh, yeah well big farmer and the husband of the anti drugs Probably minister <laughs> so that the person that's trying to keep cannabis banned her husband is the person that has probably one of the biggest medicinal cannabis factories in the UK so yeah. it it's kind of counterproductive because the person that gives the green light which i reckon her husband would benefit just as much if not more so than than he does now by selling it abroad because like this the states california is completely flooded with medical marijuana growers and they allow you to grow a certain amount and all this stuff so mm. you know i also found out an interesting fact the other day watching um a program on vice did you know cannabis isn't legal in uh, Amsterdam. Yeah, I know. It never has been. It's just tolerated. No, they've got a tolerance policy of under five grams. Yeah, and you're not allowed that. to use it in public. Well, they, they again, they tolerate that of it, um, most of the time because they they know the level of tourism. So instead of doing what company, what um, countries like uh, Korea do, where well, they lock you up for an indefinite period for breaking a simple law that you didn't know was a law. Or like that guy from Glasgow that got held in a Dubai jail for six months because he brushed past a man in public or something like this. Um, yeah, it's, it's it, yeah, but they kind yeah. of got their heads screwed on with that because in Dubai, obviously, they didn't take make take into account the fact that that is not a common law in the country in which the person they've been imprisoned comes from. So no, it's exactly. just ridiculous. But yeah, so Amsterdam are kind of more tolerant of that sort of stuff. But again. Um, this documentary was actually not about cannabis. It was about um, shrooms. Shrooms got shrooms were a massive part of um, culture in Amsterdam. They used to always take psychedelic mushrooms, and uh, tourists come over, took too much, tripped out, and was doing stupid shit. Like one of them beheaded a dog in a public place to free it from a demon that was possessing it, or some madness. And uh, yeah, they outlawed mushrooms, so they make these magic truffle things now. But they, that's what the documentary is about. But it was just interesting because it's a popular misconception that cannabis is legal in Amsterdam. And I think it's quite <coughs> important um, for myself. It's quite a learning curve. And I think that's also something you need to take into consideration when it comes to vaping. To a lot of people, the knowledge that vaping is actually 95%, give or take, safer is probably going to be quite surprising. Oh yeah. 
You would you would believe the amount of people that just come in with their their spouses who want to give up smoking. They're like, well, this is just as bad as cigarettes. I don't know why they're bothering. And then then we, we in a kind way educate them, and they're like, oh, okay, fair enough. Um, right, next. And I didn't realise this was such a big thing, but apparently, um, according to a recent study, actually allowing smokers their preferred nicotine intake level, which to, to me, someone who works in a shop seems like a fairly obvious thing. It's actually one of the biggest contributors to someone giving up. If you gave them just anything with any amount of nicotine, it's less likely to work than if you can allow them to tailor their nicotine strength. Now to us, we're so used to choosing our nicotine strength. But I didn't realize that that was part of the biggest factor in giving up. Obviously some nicotine helps, but basically what they're saying is researchers at Queen Mary University in London followed 50 smokers in a tobacco dependence clinic in Argentina as they tried to quit smoking. It's the first study to tailor nicotine dosing according to smokers' choices, and the results suggest that most smokers using stop smoking medications can tolerate doses that are up to four times higher than the ones recommended. So when they're smoking, smokers are able to control the amount of nicotine they obtain and having levels restricted when they're trying to quit is counterproductive. Smokers determine their nicotine intake levels whilst they smoke, but when they try to quit, their nicotine levels are dictated by the recommended dosing of treatment. These levels may be far too low for some people. Um, the participants of this study started on one daily 21 milligram nicotine patch four weeks prior and uh, finally, up to a maximum of four patches, totaling 84 milligrams a day. After the quit date, the dose was reduced and it reverted back to a standard four weeks later. The participants were also advised to continue smoking as they pleased throughout the pre-quit period and were offered additional oral nicotine replacement therapies. Now, this goes to show that if someone is smoking more, they're going to want more nicotine. This is why vaping has become the most successful cessation product ever is because when you have your gum or your patches you're given a recommended dose and it's just not enough to help isn't there something like uh, 10 milligrams of nicotine in one cigarette or did i make 10 that? or 12 yeah 10 or yeah, 12 right. yeah so that's that's about eight eight cigarettes in essence it's quite mad yeah. to think that at 50 milligram i'm vaping maybe about a milliliter a day so I'm only vaping the equivalent of five cigarettes worth of nicotine, but to the average vapor, this is fucking stupidly strong. Yeah. I mean, there was this but big I thing think... with Juul, um, where they had this big anti-Juul campaign that said one Juul pod is the equivalent to 20 cigarettes. And when someone actually sat down and did the maths, one Juul pod is the equivalent to three cigarettes. Well, it's 1.8 milliliters at 50 milligrams, so it's closer to 10 cigarettes, really. No, close to five. Wait, five, five, fifty, fifty milligrams. It's milligram. between three and five. No, it's not. It's not. It can't be. Hang on, hang on, hang on, <laughs> hang on, hang on, hang on. If... We're 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 going with the milligram, not milligram per milliliter, which is where people get confused. Yeah, well, this is a, this is what I'm saying. Milligram per milliliter. If there's one point eight milliliters, which is more or less two milliliters, uh, at fifty milligrams per milliliter, it's a hundred milligrams per pod. So one pod is equivalent to about 10 cigarettes, not two or three or whatever. Because 10 cigarettes at 10 milligrams each is uh, 100 I'll, I'll have to find the article that I found that explained it in yeah. detail. Um, but yeah, all right. And the last bit, which I think is absolutely hilarious because Hawaii are awesome. Hawaii has considered raising the minimum smoking age to 100. I saw this. I didn't read it because <laughs> I thought it was uh, a load of old shit. But if they basically, do, it would be awesome. <laughs> The legislation was proposed by the Democratic State Representative Richard Cragen and if implemented will ultimately lead to an unprecedented ban on the sale of cigarettes in Hawaii, making it the first US state to implement such a measure. Like in many other US states, current Hawaiians must be 21, but under the proposals the age would rise to 30 in 2020, 40 in 2021, 50 in 2022 and then make the jump from 60 to 100 in 2024. Um, Thankfully, the age limit would not apply to safe alternatives such as e-cigarettes and SNUs. Whatever the fuck SNUS is. Oh, it's SNUS, isn't it? Which is like... Um, that's safe stuff you put up your nose. Yeah. No, that's snuff, isn't it? SNUS is... Um... It's powdered tobacco. Yeah, yeah. It's like a chewing tobacco, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. You put um, it between your, your gums. Yeah. Snus, I think they call it. 
So basically, this guy's saying that cigarettes should be as restricted as other deadly substances. Uh, Craig and added that cigarettes should be taken as seriously, and the state is obliged to protect the public's health. We don't allow people free access to opioids, for instance, or any prescription drugs. Uh, Craigan's bill has two other sponsors and expected to be heard by the House <sighs> Health Committee in the coming days. I think that's an amazing thing. They're not banning smoking; it... they're just raising <laughs> the smoking age to be more useful. I mean, I think I think there's two, three things to that. One, they can't use opium as a as a as an example because opium is constantly prescribed by the doctors in almost every medication that's for pain relief, etc., etc., above sort of paracetamol level. Um, so they can't use that as an example. Uh, two, it will make the sale of cigarettes in Hawaii poss impossible, but they won't be able to ban an import of cigarettes. So all they'll have is people going into going to main, mainland Hawaii or going to other states, buying fucking hundreds of them and coming back and stockpiling. And it's only the same as when you go abroad, isn't it? When you're like in duty free, you'd buy a packet of like you'd buy like a thousand fags and you'd bring them home. So, I, I, I don't know, I think it's kind of good. I also think it's kind of pointless because it's, it's almost like a novelty law. You know what I mean? It's not, yeah. it, it, will, it will make it harder for cigarettes to get hold, people to get hold of cigarettes, but it won't make it completely stop. You know, nothing will. Stopping producing cigarettes will make smoking, you know, it'll make people stop smoking. But, yeah, I think we're in, we're in a situation where... Um, Freely having the alternatives available will help greatly, uh, yeah. but also I don't know, I don't know, I don't know. I, I think it's kind of like a false hope news. Does that, does that make sense? Yeah, yeah. I because mean, it's, imagine it's, it's, if it actually happens. If it if it actually happens, fair fucking play. But I'd almost put money on the fact that it won't. Yeah, fair enough. Um, and that is my news for this week. Yeah. So a lot of good agenda pushing um, from main bodies news this week, which is quite good. Obviously, they're just spouting information that we already know, but it's it's who's saying it that I think is the most important thing. Do you know what? Uh, that fucking music that Mark plays, uh, the loop stopped as you stopped the news, and I thought, oh, that's really good, and then it started again. Yeah. I timed that perfectly. <laughs> I've been counting beats in my head the whole time. It's fucking doing my head. You know when... Have you ever seen um, See No Evil? No. And uh, oh, it's uh, Kane from wrestling. He's like a serial killer and his mum's like a mad religious nut. And there's like a reoccurring clip where he's locked in a cage and she's playing this fucking Jesus song and he's rocking back and forward. It's like that. It's just like... Just constantly playing in the background. Can we turn it down a little bit? <laughs> right, I'm getting the playing cards back out. Fuck you. Yeah. Uh, he's turned it down. Oh, no, he fucking hasn't. Lies. Turn the fucking music down. It's doing my editing because it's only about a 30, 30 second clip as well, isn't it? Just looping. Is it? Yeah, and there's a gap. Where the track ends, it starts again. So you, you get hopeful that it's stopped and it's just carrying on again. And it just carries <laughs> on. Um, right. So, Mark, let's move on to our main feature of the evening. Can I make my Gillette joke again? If you must. Well, I'm not. Oh, for fuck's sake. What's the matter, Chris? This carries on. I'm playing Fortnite. What carries on? <laughs> This fucking shit music. It stopped about a minute ago. Yeah, and the new shit started. Oh, Badger's finally joined us then. <laughs> there we go. Right, Mark, point. Find it. Point. Point. What am I pointing? The point. <laughs> the point. What's yeah. the point when you can't hear yourself think over the shit music? So, this week, Mark oh, sent me a post. Oh, yes. And he said, what do you think? Go on, Mark. You got it. Have you got the notes in front of you to read it? Yes, I, 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 I've got it. Um, I'm just trying to scan read the post just to see. Um, 
There's no names in it, so you can There's good. no names. Okay, so so the post that I saw <laughs> This noise there, this music's annoying me. Oh there is names, but it's not that. directed at anyone, so So the 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 question is is that is that first line something we've written or that first line something we've written. Do you want me to read that or leave that be? Yes, go for it. Might as well. So, <coughs> uh, is promotion in the vaping industry fucked? I.e. the free, ba free ship brigade, team promotion, and um, the obvious scroungers. So, so the post we found, um, I can't remember where it came from. Um, or her it was referring to does it say anything about it's referring to no I know it was referring to um, but okay so so the post was as follows we've had a discussion in our admin chat over the last few weeks and wondered what you guys and girls thought about it there you go Chris is gone now um, we've seen it many times before the last couple the last couple have been Apex and Nameless mods. Now people to promote their products even before they are released in the hope of getting one for free depending on the amount of exposure they give to the name and interest they create for the product. We've seen them posted by many people all over many groups and for us it actually puts us off. Um, as it's like a constant spam in your email. The more you the more you get, the more you hate it. For us, we feel like this kind of promotion does more harm than good. Yes, you'll say, but it's not got us talking about. But it's got us talking about them. But for us, in a very negative way, and we wouldn't want to buy one now, no matter how good they are, due to this constant bombardment of hype about them, without anyone actually have it, having ever used one. Beside the makers. What happens if they're rubbish? Will they stand behind their comments about them then? So come on, what are your thoughts then? No nasty comments please, we are genuinely interested in what you think regarding the way this is promoted... In the way you think regarding this way of promoting a vaping product before they're released to the people promoting it. Wow. Um, <laughs> let alone the vaping public to actually hold and use themselves. So, I think this has come from um, come from a, a group where they've been bon bombarded with a pre-release product. So photos have been leaked, shared, um, yeah. overly promoted, perhaps. Um, mm. What what? What are our thoughts now? Now I've got something to say on this um, because I'll go with it. In the, in in the past, now I want people's opinion first before I go any further. People's opinion first. I can't first. tell if you can hear me. Yeah, I can now. I'd... Can you honestly? Can you seriously? Can you turn that shit music down at least? It's honestly, I'm losing the will to live. Like not even taking the piss anymore. I genuinely am losing the will to live. Is that better? Is that better? Well, off would be better, but I'll tolerate it. Um, Tell you what, well, while, while, whilst, whilst Chris talks, let's go. Let's go quiet. It depends on what people are saying about it in these posts, because I'm at a stage now where I don't really pay attention to all this bollocks. Do you know what I mean? To so it depends to on hide. what they're saying. Yeah, yeah, but this is the thing. I, I'm not entirely sure what their definition of hype is because someone posting a picture of a product that they've not used before what the fuck's wrong with that i've got loads of products that i'll show you pictures of and say that is the sexiest thing i've ever seen in my life and i've never tried it before it could be dog shit but the, the fact of the matter is if they're saying oh it's the best hardest hitting mech in the world then i understand people being like well why the fuck are you what are you lying for do you know what i mean like the fact of the matter is you won't know if it's the hardest hitting thing because you haven't fucking tried it you bell end. but at the same time it very much depends on the nature of what this this uh, hype is all about because there's nothing wrong with like for instance in the process of making a Pandora I sent you pictures I sent you prototypes you saw it before anyone else if you took and showed a picture like if I showed you a picture and you took and put it up on online and you said oh this is coming soon 
It's not necessarily anything. There's no lies there. You've seen it. You've expressed the fact that you enjoy it and you're interested in it. And um, but if you was if you was to take that photograph and give that photograph to thirty people and said, right guys, I will give you free shit if you go out and promote the hell out of this. And then those again, thirty people, those thirty people go around all the Facebook groups and bombard the shit out of it. I think it says more about the 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 people that are actually promoting this shit than it does about the people that are asking them to promote it. To be honest, because where's your integrity if you're promoting a product you've never tried, never seen, and don't actually have a fucking a clue whether it's any good? You know, the fact of the matter is that I'm not entirely sure. Um, whether the company's doing anything wrong by doing that, you know, essentially they're aim they're aiming their their um their they're aiming their promo to the market that they think is going to be accurate. The same way, if you were advertising for a movie, you your best bet is to put the put it up on you know buses or the sides of buses where you can get a lot of footfall. The same way, if you're advertising a gardening service, you might put it somewhere where there's a lot of fucking nice gardens. You know, you would. You can't really blame people for advertising in an area. It's more that the sheep that are willing to jump on that bandwagon and put in the effort to promote products they don't know anything about. And that's the problem there. Because if a, a product come out, say for instance the Cherry Bomber, and they took the same approach with that and they said, yeah, this is a Cherry Bomber. And 50 people genuinely thought it looked sexy, right? They genuinely thought this Cherry Bomber looks the bollocks. And Just they went 50. and promoted it. <laughs> well... They, they went and promoted it, right? They went and spammed the fuck out, showed pictures of this cherry bomber. Then the cherry bomber actually comes out and blows people's faces off. Then who looks like a bigger cunt? Do you know what I mean? Orgy's just made a very, very good point. Um, getting interested in companies' up-and-coming devices or juice is a good idea, I think. But, but it being shoved in your face is a bit much, and letting the reviewers try it and get their reviews on it. You know, he's obviously I think Orgy's, got a wholesale think, account... Sorry, I think I think Orgy's hit the nail on the head. You know, wait, wait for the reviewers. Wait for. Hmm. I think I think the issue I've got with this whole thing is, I think the issue I've got with this whole thing is not so much advertising because it's it's usual and normal for companies to put products out in out there into the media to build up a little bit of hype of it, and if people know it's coming, they're going to buy it. It's the people that, like you say, Chris, are willing to promote it in the hope of jumping up and down waving their arms and getting the company to notice them saying well i've posted this in thirty-five thousand different groups all over instagram taking loads of artsy photoshop photos of it and where's my free one and it's i see a lot of mods like groups and all this sort of thing and it'll be like hashtag team for life bro and then it'll be whatever fucking mod it is and like you say they've never tried it it's not even come out yet and yet they're they're pushing it as if it's the next big thing, and I see it too much. And like this poster said, actually, the more it's hyped, the less I want to try it. I want to try that mod that maybe a couple of people have tried, a couple of people have reviewed, and actually gone, oh, that looks kind of interesting. Give that a go, rather than the one that has three different fucking team groups behind it, a promotional team, a captain that fucking does this, and then they start putting up fucking live views and raffles and shit i will i will give a prime example of of i'm not i'm not going to name names i'm not that that someone who has released a product designed developed manufactured a product and it's been promoted to fuck massively promoted to fuck the team behind it has promoted it to fuck they've got the hype built to fuck the products released and I'm not going to say it's dog shit, but I'm going to say it's not done as well as it could have done. Right. For whatever reason. Now, you know, all the promotional team have gone out and done their thing. This is amazing. This is amazing. This is amazing. Put it in the hands of the reviewers. The reviewers have gone, this is dog shit. And, yeah. Do you think the popularity life of a product starts when people start hyping it? So by the time it comes out, people are already bored of seeing it. People are already done with it, and they're not going to purchase it. If they did a week or two's worth of promotion, then released it, let the hype 
train start when people can actually get hold of it? Because if you're releasing a product, it's like, what's this? Where can I get it? Oh, no, it's not for sale for another six months. People are going to go, well, fuck it then. Okay, you know? so I, I, I am responsible in being involved in said hype train. Um, now, I'm not going to mention any brand names, um, but my company was um, the European, sole European uh, retailer and distributor for a said American product. Now, this particular product was designed by a guy who came from a very big American brand. So he'd got a massive following and this this product was released in very, very, very low numbers. Now, cue the hype train. So this product re released, oh, it hits like hits like a drun drunken stepdad it hits like this it hits like that it hits and don't get me wrong it this particular product did hit hard now i was responsible for jumping on this hype train and i i was one of the very 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 few people that got a a prototype of this said product and as the sole retailer, it was my responsibility to ensure that people wanted this product. Chris knows exactly what I'm talking about. I can tell by the look on his face. Um, what just what makes me laugh actually is that that despite the person, the, the product you're talking about was good. There's no doubt about it. The product was good. But what's the difference between someone promoting a product and the product coming out and being shit? Or someone promoting a product that is good, but then it turns out the owner of the company is a cock and makes the whole, the whole, the whole world look bad. What's the difference? What's the difference? Do you know what I mean? This is why. This is why I mentioned no names. Do you know what I mean? Though? It's like it's like uh, it's like like the Lost Profits, the band. You're not allowed to like the Lost Profits now because the lead singers are fucking wrong. Un. But actually, maybe the rest of the band weren't. And everyone boycotts the lost profits based on that fact. And it's the same thing. The product that, that that you promote may be the best product on the market, but if the people that are behind it are a fucking right bunch of cunts, it doesn't this matter. Product, and you're going to look bad because that guy makes you look bad. The, the product was good, hang, right? Oh. Yeah. If you hang around with I'll an arsehole, you, you get associated with being a yob if you hang around with yobs. It doesn't but mean you are one. This is an incredibly fickle industry. What's popular to this week won't be popular next week. And if you've already started hyping people up for something and then something else comes out in the meantime, they're going to forget about your product. Right. This, just... these, this, this pro product lasted about a year, year and a half, two years maybe. And everything was released in such small numbers. Now, they released a line of... Um, let's say um, special colours. So a gold finish, a rhodium finish, a rose gold finish, blah, 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 blah. Now, as, as, a, as a thank you to their retailers, to the guys that had supported it, they were sold. Now, you've got to bear in mind, okay, okay. The, these, these were mechanical tubes that we're talking about. So, the the original tube that came out, I think the retail on it was two hundred and forty five pounds. However, exactly what we're talking about now. Which, there we which, go. I don't. Which, to be honest, it can be. It's quite a, scra a scoundrelous price, isn't it? Scandalous, <laughs> scandalous price. Scandalous, scandalous price. price. So two hundred and forty five pound for this tube. This brass tube was the first product. Okay, so bearing in mind, you'd expect the retailers to be making a lot of money out of it. But I believe we were only allowed either 10 or 20 to retail in your particular country. Weren't you now, only allowed like a 4% profit margin or something? So we, we, we didn't make a lot on these products. So we sold them at 2 But they pre-order as well. Didn't you have to pay yeah. up like months in advance? Oh, we for them? we was had to pay. Was your profit murdered out, perchance? But... No, no, wrong That's company. the wrong product. Um, <laughs> um, but can I, can I just, can I just say, um, if now this is going to be quite controversial, Mark, and I don't want you to take offence to this. No, no, not at but all. But if your 
you've had you're pre-ordering it based on a, a single product that exists, a single prototype or a single picture or whatever it is. Is it, it essentially you sort of joining this hype train? Yeah, like, absolutely. do you know what I mean? Do you know what I mean? Like, like, like how when we're saying these people that are all promoting this product that they haven't tried before, uh, there will be people that spark have sparked interest because of their posts, and in the same way that your interest was sparked by seeing or trying or feeling that one product that wasn't necessarily testament to how the finished products were going to be. Do you know what I mean? True. So, True. if anything, that exact marketing model worked on retailers like yourself. It did, absolutely. And I I actually put my first 20-odd thousand pounds down before I'd even touched a prototype. I'd seen photos, I'd hear, heard lots of um, lots of slobber about it, but I'd never actually touched. My, my first 20k went down to pay for the manufacturer. So I got X amount of X amount of products, 245 quid I think they were retail, and we didn't make a great margin on them. However, by the end of probably took the first run probably took less than two less than a week to sell out by the end of that week they were selling for they were flipping for over a thousand pound a piece yep over a thousand pound a piece and you could not get them for love nor money and everybody wanted them to be fair i could have had one i could have had one during the hype point because yep. uh, Max left you were it all over. Max left it all over the sides on uh, on Expo, Expo. I stuck it in my pocket about six times, and he didn't even notice. Yep. I could have yep. just nicked it. <laughs> but yeah, it, I mean, it, 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 you know what? You know what? I'm sure I've still got one. What an here somewhere? This is the able. thing, right? And it, it also goes on the fact. I mean, this ties into the whole free shit brigade, right? The very first vape jam I went to, I think it was the second ever one in the bottom floor of Kensington Olympia, right? And companies were literally handing out bags of free juice, right? And everyone thought, bloody hell, this is fucking great. What then happened is that set a precedent for people to expect it. And I know because the next vape expo I went to, um, well, I, a friend of mine who went, he walked away with two sports bags full of free juice that he was given. Didn't even ask for it. Then a lot of happened and the TPD came in and all of the juice companies just shut shut house and went, nah, no, no it, free it, shit. It, it, it was before that. It was way before TPD. It was before the TPD, uh, before they'd even decided what the TPD regulations were going to be. And it wasn't actually that people stopped giving away free shit. It's that a different precedent was set with Vape Expo, and mm. people who'd attended Vape Jam expected the same treatment. And yeah. then people who did spend tens of thousands of pounds flying over here to do a Vape Expo uh, gave away a, a, a lot less than they did at a Vape Jam, but they gave away a lot less because the, all the people that were taking the free shit at... at um, uh, vape jam weren't actually buying nothing. They didn't continue no. using the juice afterwards. They didn't take it to their local shop. And the the people that were bought were taking bottles of it on B two B days. Didn't then place orders. So they said, "Well, what's the fucking point?" So it's mm. partly it's partly mm. the 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 ex the, the show's fault for allowing the, that precedent to be set. It's also partly the public's fault because if you don't sorry, I got distracted by Rupert the Bear behind Cass. Um, <laughs> you know, you don't actually. You know what I mean? If I say to you, "Give me a, give me that uh, mod there, Mark. I'm going to do a review," and you send it to me, and I don't do a review, you're not going to send me any more shit. The same way when people uh, took away all this free juice, saying that they were going to take it to the local shops, and you know, oh, they know someone that wants to place an order, and all this bollocks that they did to try and get free stuff. Then uh, no wonder they stopped giving them free shit when nothing came of it. Yeah, I mean back then, Suicide Bunny were massive. Um, 
I'm trying to think of other names. V God were massive. They'd just come out mm. with their juice range. Where are they now? They pulled well, their money and said bollocks to this because there's so much well, competition with so many fucking idiots. Vape Jam last year in May, um, they they run out of juice by halfway through Saturday because they were just giving so much of it away. Well, well I'm I'm a, I'm offended by Mark Mark's Marksky's statement. I don't think I've ever been offered any free juice at any indoor event. Really. Really? Lying cunt. Simon's though, because it said pre TPD suicide bunny assaulted you into taking their stuff for free. Yeah. Yeah, pretty much. But again, the, thing is... the same the mm-hmm. same thing there though, is that they they kind of shoved so much free shit in people's hands. I mean, what are you more likely to vape? Something you've spent twenty quid on or something someone chucked at you when you didn't want it. You know what? I, I st- my my f- oh, my first event my first event I went as a as a vendor and they were obviously handing out free shit to vendors um okay Mark I'll, I'll take that back from a stranger um <laughs> now you're not supposed to take candy from I mean juice from strangers Mark um now I remember coming home and we'd not long set the business up and I come home with bags and bags and bags of juice. I mean bags. I know, and you still had bags and bags and bags of dildos to clear, didn't you? Exactly, exactly. So I got home and I just did not appreciate anything that I hadn't paid for. No, you don't. I got zero respect. I used the the last expo I went to... um... I came back with quite a lot of stuff, but I would say 90% of it was from companies who I'd already been reviewing who wanted to sort me out with their new ranges and say, you know, can you do this, can you do that? But no, you, you, you heard people at the stands going, go on, mate, give us a bottle of that for free. Go on, you can sort me out. I bet you've got thousands back there. And no, it just... The worst thing was when you'd come along and you'd have hear people saying shit like... Um... Oh, so I'm having a competition with my mate to see how much free shit I can get over the weekend. Do you got anything? And they'd be like, um, no. And they'd be like, all right, bye. And just walk off. No conversation. No, hi, how you doing, mate? What's up? You know what I mean? It was yeah. just a fucking pure... People, have, having, having vended, right, people will come up. I'm, I'm looking around for a bag. I've not got one. I just those little cotton vapor expo bags. People will walk up to you with their bag open and go... What you got? And it is yeah. the expectation of free shit. I mean, don't give me wrong. Expensive. Like I'm, like, I'm not gonna lie. I'm like that with people I know. I'm hmm. like, come on, send me some of that shit. But I didn't, couldn't. I, I, I mean, I'm quite an out there person. Do you know what I mean? I, you know, I'm the sort of person that would come up to go up to someone in the street. Like some little eighteen-year-old kid whose trousers are hanging down, and pull them up without saying anything. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> I'm I'm quite a people person, but I, I'm not a people person to the point where I can almost Jehovah's Witness myself at your stand uh, for a little sales pitch about how I want some free shit. Take it and then just walk off. I just can't do it. And I mean, don't get me wrong. I've been offered free shit at shows, and a lot of time I turn it down and say, "Look, mate, I'll be honest. I won't use it. Not because I think you're branding shit or your juicy shit, because I've spent three hundred quid while I've been here this weekend, and I need to go through this shit first. I mean, but people, I'll be honest. Sorry, go on. I was going to say, people who um, do have a uh, a product that I'm interested in, when I'm talking to them about <laughs> it, they'll be like, "Look, mate, just take one. Take one and try it. Take one and try it. Let me know what you think." You know, and. I have tried it and I have contacted them and said that mate I'm sorry but this is dog shit or sorry but you know this is actually really nice but it's the same way with anything that word of mouth is spread by people that have positive information or negative information to share a a middle of the road product is never going to get that you're never going to have someone hyping it like mad to their friends or slagging it off to everyone else because no one cares about it and it's a bit like Orgy and Chat were saying earlier um, he he said that Vandy Vape were releasing products every week, and that's that's exactly what it is. I couldn't, I can't remember what half the products they released are because they don't even have, let it be on the market long enough to have time to be hyped or slagged off, because they're middle of the road products. And all of the this is where it becomes so hard to stand out because people almost have an expectation of anything in a certain price bracket to be bog standard. 
I mean, I had when I started my vaping channel. Um, I will be honest. I did go to companies and say, "Look, I'm starting a channel. Will you sort me out with some stuff?" And I used Expo as a good place to see a lot of companies in a very, very short time. Now, most people were quite happy and obliging, you know, willing to oblige me. And those companies are still companies that are supporting me now. Um, but you have to do it, and you have to, you know, give them feedback, talk to them, not just be that guy that turns up asking for free shit. Because you, if, if I was, you if I was. If I was to give you access to my to our Instagram account mm. and see all the messages held, oh, I could read you some of mine. And do you know what yeah, I mean? I've, I believe it. It's fucking. I, I used. Insane. I used like to be a, prime a, mod, example, a mod, didn't I? My prime, prime example. I've been. I've worked. I've been working non-stop since Thursday. Right. I spoke to my brother Thursday night. I think it was Friday night. And I says to him, I'll send you a Pandora out when I've had time, right? I've been working 36-hour shifts. Like, Mark, you know, from discussion in the chat. Do you know what I mean? I started at 9 a.m. yesterday. I finished at 4 p.m. today. And then tomorrow morning, I'm back in at 9 a.m. And I finish the next day at 9 a.m. And he's still hounding me for free shit. He might as well be sending me Instagram messages. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I think this kind of goes on. Like, it's... what. What we as consumers expect from the companies is how the companies, and this this moves segue nice nice segue into our next section, is about how we expect customer service to be from the companies that we're dealing with. Um, let me tell you a little story. So, um, <laughs> Simon just said that's not free shit. You're offering to add advertisement. Yeah, no, but I didn't, you know, some of it I didn't pay for, so it's still free. Basically, so this goes on to our next thing, and you probably saw in the post about this, we're going to be talking about customer service. Can we can we just hold fire? I know Chandler's just about to drop into this. Oh, okay. Um, I've just sent him just sent him his link. Um, so, so to finalise on over-advertising, over-promotion, do we think that some stuff is over promoted. Hundred percent. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Is there anything it... you've? Is there anything that you've ever reviewed, Cass? That you gave a shit review, and then the person still come back and offered you more stuff, uh, but like despite the fact that they didn't like your review of their product. Um, no, actually, I did have one company, and now I have to give a disclaimer to any company asking me to review. I did have one company ask to. Um, review my review before I posted it online to make sure it met with their um, their, their valued opinions. In other words, they said, we want to make sure what you're saying is good before we allow you to put it online. And I said, Did you'll you see it at the same bullets? time as everyone else. Yeah, I put it online and said, here's the link. And they went, is this public? I said, yeah, of course it is. Um, I haven't heard from them since. Um, what did no, the I review one... say? What did the review say, though? Review was fairly good, actually. The juice was not bad at all. Um, but... I did have a company who emailed me and said, um, this company will remain nameless, um, emailed me and said, um, we'd like you to review our juice. So they sent me their first rate, their first four flavours or whatever it was. Then they brought out a new flavour. I got sent that because they had a lovely woman who was my contact. Anyway, she left the company and some other lad took over. And I said, oh, okay, well, you've got this new range coming out. Are we still cool to work with each other? And um, the lad said, well, uh, when I get time, I'll look at your channel. And I was like, right, okay. And at this point, they were featuring all of my previous reviews on their website. And I said, well, you know, you're featuring our rev my reviews on the website. What's the issue? And he goes, well, they're a bit long. We like them to be a little bit snappier. And then continued to feature my review on their website and refused to continue to support the channel. And it was such a weird dichotomy. Again, I had another company sort me out with the first range of juice. And why, won't you, why won't you say who they are? Just oh, no, I'll say who they are. Zap Juice. Okay. Um, and if is you know the, the marketing the, team, is that the one of, in the weird bottles? Um, maybe they do like vintage like, cola and shit like that. Oh, I don't know. Um, Zap e Sigs, the Welsh company. No, Manchester based. Oh no, it's not. I think it is. Um, and then I had another company who I am currently working with, so I don't want to name them. And it's not really their fault. They've had a change of staff since then. Um, they sent me the first range. Lovely to deal with. Wonderful. They got a new lad in again. Um, he looked at it and went, no, you, we're not, you're not getting high enough views um, for us to continue sending juice. I said, well, fine, whatever. That's your own opinion. Left it at that. I got an email probably a week ago from the same company, different person this time. 
we love your we love your reviews. Um, would you like our new range? Also, we notice you're missing a few flavors. So, <laughs> without sort of saying, well, actually, the reason is, um, you know, I've, I'm happy to happy to review with them. But you get it really depends on the person you get as a reviewer as to who your contact is because it, they take it down to personal opinion. Um, but also it also depends of whether the person you're dealing with is a bell end. So a lot of people come in and they have these big bright ideas of how they're going to run the marketing side of a company or whatever. And then they soon put in their place like, no, you're not doing that anymore because we did it like this before when Dave was here and it worked yeah. really fucking well. And now you're here and it's not working because you're a tosser. Do you yeah. know what I mean? The, the fact of the matter is that actually there's no real um, guidebook to, ha to how to interact with people. And the thing is that they don't know what they got to it till it's gone a lot of the time. No. Do you know what I mean? I mean like, one, of the, one of the loveliest companies I've ever had to deal with was Element E Liquid. Wonderful is company. Is that Fred to deal Flintstone? With. Who? He's what? Got a bowling shirt on. <laughs> All right, Chandler. It's not a bowling shirt, fuck's sake. Hang on, hang on, hang on. Don't forget hang to on. press record. Don't forget to press record. Let me just adjust my glasses. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Chandler, um, you've got a bit of a smudge there, mate. Maybe you need a wet wipe. A <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear. Right. I just like to. I would just like to point out that I did, in fact, press record. Um, it, it was just the um, the the MP3 file when I finished was corrupt, and it's the first time that has happened in. I got, I got you, bro. I saw it out. I was saying earlier. Twenty odd episodes. I was saying earlier that actually I, I sold you a really good PC in order to eradicate your tech problems, and you seem to cause them yourself. So I'm blaming the PC. I I, I actually think it was the hard drive on the PC. So it, it 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 was the PC. Ergo, it's your fault. I hate you. There's two. There's actually <laughs> two hard drives in that PC, if I remember rightly. And if you use the, the fast one, the SSD, then it wouldn't be a problem. But if I you're know. saving it onto the backup drive... I'm just leaving this bit uh... <laughs> <laughs> Right. I'm just leaving okay. this bit Yeah, I did end. make... Uh, yeah, I did... Oh, the bit of the, bit you the haven't. end... The, Kaz, the bit you of haven't. The, the bit I haven't of, sent the him bit anything. Of, the bit at the end you is the only bit he has any... got. I'm just leaving no, this bit I'm... at the end. That was when that first came out. That was ages ago. Right, 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 right. Caspian, what, what, what aren't you allowed to send me? What aren't I? Lo oh no, I haven't. No, I th he thinks I thought uh, he thinks I've sent you something else, and I haven't. You've seen everything I've sent you. Everything what, what, that I've what, edited what? and changed. What? What uh, aren't I allowed to see? Well, you saw the Chandler going no, insane video. And you saw yeah, that I'm just leaving this bit at the end for um, for Kaz to 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 edit off. I've yeah. got to give him something to do. <clears throat> I do waffle a bit in this. I I, I now audio. kind of realise actually how yeah. hard doing this video malarkey setting it all. Up. I've got a bloody my daughter's lamp here, um, and it's Ready? got a. It's too bright. Look, it, it I've got a I've got an it's old wet wipe, wipe. dry wet wipe <laughs> hanging over it as a diffuser. <laughs> oh, for right. Fuck's okay. Sake. Okay, so now you're here, Chandler. I can do my story. So, okay. Uh, guy Man walks into with, a bar. <laughs> guy I work with bought one of the Artery Pal 2s. Now, I am going to name and shame because I think this is shocking customer service. He bought it from Vaping 101. Right? I thought you were going to say <laughs> vape, vape Shop's name then. Uh, no, va Vaping 101. And he is an avid user of pods he knows how long batteries should last on them etc etc anyway he got this device and he was getting two maybe three hours out of this device which was shocking considering i think it's a thousand mile battery in there i think it's quite a big battery for such a small device and he had could, smaller Go on. could that be a problem though could that be could a that be a what? problem the fact that the fact that if it's too good to be true it probably is well, maybe, but the issue here isn't so much the, the fact that the device was broken, it was when he decided to contact the company about it. So he contacted the company and he said, um, I have many devices like this. Have you had any other reports of these devices going wrong or short battery lives or whatever? And the company got back saying, no, absolutely glowing reports. 
um, why, what's the issue? So he told me the issue, you know, I'm not getting much battery life out of it. Um, and considering I have other devices of a similar or worse or, or smaller battery life, for this to be lasting such a, a short amount of time isn't right. So the guy said, actually, I'm going to get the message up so I don't misquote. Bear with. It's only take a moment. Uh, da, 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 da. Okay, I've so. just, just realised while you're doing that, while you're doing that, mm -hmm. I've, I've rushed in here to get online, I've and I've room. left all I've left all my vapes in the other room, except Amazing. for my except for my squonker. There you go. So forgot, I'm vaping on that. Yeah, I forgot my wet okay. wipe too. Um, okay, so he said no, noth uh, nothing but glowing reports. But comparing one manufacturer's battery to another is never going to be accurate. So my friend replied, "Surely that's the point." Go on. It's not what Mooch does. Right. <laughs> well, that's kind of let, exactly let, let, what let, Mooch does. Go let, on. Me, let, let me finish. Go. Surely it's that's pointless, the point Mooch. Mar it's pointless. It's fucking pointless. That is. Uh, surely that's the point of Mar ratings for comparison. <laughs> So Vaping101 came back and said, have you tested them all? Um, and he said, what do you mean? And then, oh, let me just find the rest of this. He goes, uh, oh. what did you mean by have I tested them all? Have you tested each battery to see what mar they actually output? And he went, well, how would I do that? And the guy went, well, you would need to do that in order to establish your thinking. Well, how would you suggest I did that? He says. And then he got the guy sends him a Google search. You know that let me Google that for you bullshit thing that some people always put up as sarcastic comments. No, I don't. I don't think it was. I don't think it was. Was it not let that? Let me Google that. It wasn't. It was a genuinely. It was a genuine Google oh, search. Just, right. And he, anyway, my Wait, friend. I replies, thought it was, and I thought, what a cheeky cunt. But then I realised right. it wasn't. <laughs> he goes, "Hang on. Are you expecting an average customer to have to do this to take them seriously?" And he just goes, no, not at all. There's nothing wrong with the device, and comparing it to another manufacturer's product is not applicable, but it would provide peace of mind. Now, <laughs> essentially, this company, instead of saying something along the lines of, we'll take it back for testing and we'll let you know what we think, he's just going, nope, there's nothing wrong with it. Now, I would be crucified if I said to a customer when they came in, oh, this isn't working, and I went, no, there's nothing wrong with it, without even having <laughs> looked at it. You know, and we're not we're not talking. This is something he bought six months ago. This is within a week of it arriving and him using it. It's just see the just worst thing shocking. about it is that generally with customer service, you'd you'd be testing even a proper proper trivial problem. But I've been into vape shops before where they've um, where I've seen someone come in and say, uh, my, 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 "My motor's not working, mate," and I'm like, "I've dropped it." Uh, yeah, like once, and then you pick it up and you're like, <laughs> rattle, rattle, rattle. And then they open it up, and there'll be a massive dent in the positive terminal where the, the nub mm. of the fucking mod smashed into it when it hit the floor. And it'd be like, um, yeah, that's your problem, mate. Well, no, normally, my Do you process. Know what I mean? The fact is, they just had a look oh, at Oh, yeah. Uh, I mean, my process for testing, when someone comes in and says, this isn't lasting right, and if it's a product that I know has a decent battery life, I'll say, right, can you leave it with me for a couple of days? And I'll say, right, okay, so I'll put it through a full charge cycle. I'll then use it myself and see what kind of battery life I'm getting. And generally, fairly quickly, you can find out whether it's broken or not, and you can then go through any kind of refund or exchange procedure. The fact is, I then... <laughs> Chris then offered to message the company for me, right? And... <laughs> the guy, the guy replied in no particular quoting terms um, that the lad was my friend was trying to compare devices to another. No shit, they're different. Now, the thing is, I just don't understand how you can take your customers with such disdain. You make, you're making so much money off of your customers. You have to at least treat them with a bit of respect. And I mean, he didn't drop the fact that he works in a vape shop. And that actually he, he does have some knowledge of what he's talking about. But when you buy something and it's wrong, what do you expect from a vape company? Chandler. Do you kind of expect them to go either? Either go, yes, that's what we would expect. You know, they'd, they'd, they would either go, if you, if you say it lasts me about two or three hours, mm. um, then if they replied back and went, yeah, that's what we get, 